Well, howdy, you flea-bitten varmints. In this video, we'll be flashing the eye spindle with its firmware. <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. Please consider subscribing to follow my progress on building a fully robotic reflux still running on open source technology. This video is for you if you already have built your eye spindle and you're looking to flash the firmware. If you missed our video on how to build an eye spindle, I'll put a card in the corner and a link down below. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. The first thing you're going to need is your eye spindle. Before flashing the eye spindle, make sure that the battery is fully charged. Next up, we're going to need the firmware to load on to the eye spindle. We can get that by going over to the eye spindle homepage. Scroll down and you'll see the download firmware link right here. This will take you to the GitHub page. And from here, we can download the firmware. Make sure you scroll past the pre-releases down to the latest release. You're going to click on the firmware.bin file and it will download. After that, we're going to need the software to actually do the flashing for us. Again, I'll put links to this in my blog post, but since we're already on the GitHub page, uh, we can go ahead and search for the uh, node MCU flasher. So we'll go node MCU. We'll search all of GitHub. And we'll see the flasher down here. I'm going to use the Windows uh, Win32 release. And here's the exe. And we can click download. That will download the flasher. Now the next step is to unplug everything from your computer because the uh, last thing you want to do is flash the wrong device. Once you've done that, come over to the flasher.exe and run it. Once that's loaded up, we'll come over to the config tab and we'll hit this little gear on the very first line. We'll select the firmware.bin file come back to the operation tab and we'll plug the eye spindle in. You can see that the COM port is now populated and we'll go ahead and press that flash button. Once the flashing is done, you'll get a little green check mark in the bottom corner over here. We'll go ahead and unplug the eye spindle and go ahead and switch it on. The eye spindle should automatically enter configuration mode. And if we come over to our Wi-Fi networks over here, we should see an eye spindle uh, network that is open. We'll go ahead and click on that and connect. Once we're connected, we'll come over to the eye spindles configuration page found at 192.168.4.1. From here, we'll go into configuration. We will select our Wi-Fi network and enter in the password. This is my third eye spindle, number three, and I'll update the name accordingly. We'll go down and we'll press save. After you save the settings on the eye spindle, make sure you don't touch it until after the light stops blinking. It will stop blinking once every second, and then we'll do a long blink and we'll reset itself. 
once the reset is done, you're uh, safe to go ahead and turn it off. But make sure you don't touch the eye spindle until it's done its internal thing and until it's fully done saving. We'll come back in and we'll make sure that the settings have saved. After the initial configuration is done, we'll need to hit the reset button about three or four times to activate the configuration mode. While in configuration mode, the blue LED will blink about once every second. To connect, we'll have to go back to the available Wi-Fi networks, find the eye spindle, connect as we did before. We'll come back to the configuration page again, 192.168.4.1. We'll hit up configuration and we'll go ahead and change the unit temperature. Now I did run into an issue with my very first eye spindle where I set up the Wi-Fi network and then I came in and I changed the um, temperature type from Celsius to Fahrenheit and every time I reset the eye spindle that setting is lost. So we're going to give that a test here just to make sure everything is saving correctly. Once again, we'll power off the eye spindle, cycle it back on again, hit the reset button three or four times, reconnect to the Wi-Fi network, and log back into the page again. So good news, the unit of temperature has saved and we have successfully flashed this eye spindle. If your unit of temperature does not stay, there are some extra steps, and uh, I'll take you through those quickly just right now. So here is the homebrewtalk.com post that the homebrewing subreddit shared with me. It goes through the process of blanking out these two addresses uh, as seen. So you'd fill in this information on the config tab, go back to operation and hit the flash button, and then down below, you would start over and flash with the bin file like we did before. So again, this fixes the issue if your uh, unit of temperature is not saving. So unless you're having that issue, definitely don't do these steps. But if you're having this issue, here is the fix for it. So congratulations, you have successfully flashed your eye spindle. In a future video, we'll be going through the calibration process and we'll look at the differences between the easy calibration and the calibration that you do over time as the fermentation progresses. Of course, we're going to be taking lots of notes and paying close attention to the different results along the way. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you like this video, make sure you share it with your friends. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hope you're having a great day, and I love you all very, very much.